it was despair for Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal, the delight for Morocco, the African continent, and indeed the Arab world, as the Atlas Lions became the first African team to progress to the semi-finals of the FIFA World Cup competition. The twists and turns remains our focus on the Sports Pop podcast, and I return as your host and guide. France is a team, the sport chef is the name, and I will be here as usual with my guys to make sense of the action and the drama currently taking place right there in football's biggest showpiece. I've got with me a debutant on the podcast, Imex. He makes his debut at um, 70, 70 year old man. And of course, Nobio is also right here with me. And together, we will try to make sense of all of the actions we've experienced thus far as the semi final beckons of us all. So, um, who should I start with? Mini, 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 more. Okay, master with Imex. Making your debut at 70. But, uh, Imex, how are you doing, bro? Yeah, good afternoon, then, Francis, and good afternoon, good afternoon to Nobel. Yeah, the other right. guy in the studio. Ah, fantastic day to talk sport. Uh, lots of things. This is the World Cup moment. Uh, a weekend of um, pain for some, a weekend of joy for, for Africa. Mm. Because the Moroccans are flying the African flag first off before the Arabian name flag. So, it's a big one. It's nice to be on, on the sport club once again. Thank you for having me on the show today. All right, Nobel, you make a return. Um, congrats to you. He was just telling me before we started that come on bro i got all my prediction right so i'm just happy that the yellow card effect <laughs> really yes he, he, he really had out the yellow card, yellow card effect card on it. Oh, why for actually doubting my 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 ability you know i was just trying to be safe <laughs> so that you do not get to deceive our viewers but it's cool it's, no, it's great to have you very very good to to be here again and again and again i'm um, always excited to talk football what do you make of morocco's ground breaking achievement well uh, fantastic for 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 the moroccans uh it has shown um the level of um football the country is currently at at the moment uh, you could state they are currently the holders of the calf champions league also the holders of the calf confederations cup and they got to the quarterfinal stages of the just of the last time of the cup of nations held in held them in cameroon earlier this year it just shows there's a progress and there's a system. But well, I wouldn't want to say the system is too much because I think it's just luck. They're riding on a bit of luck and the stars are aligning for them. At really? The yeah, the stars are aligning for them. We can want to make a case for we can want to make a case for saying like, yeah, it is a system that built a system that have done stuff, that have done stuff. But check out half more than half or 18 of those players in that team. We are born abroad. Yes, dual nationalities. Yeah, dual abroad. nationalities. Like Ashraf Hakimi, the guy that sent them through to the to the quarterfinals. He was born and bred. Born and all his footballing education was in Madrid, Spain. True. But his family is from Morocco. So there's a bit of a mixture, but you can't deny the fact that since the IFA president assumed office in 2014, there has been a deliberate attempt to improve grassroots football in the country. In, in the country. And that might be rubbing off on what we're seeing at the international stage. Well, we can also... But we should not... That's what, what I'm trying to point out is we shouldn't take away this the fact that this has always... There's always a period of luck in competitions. And sometimes there was also in Korea, Japan, 2002. When Croatia went all the way to the finals in 2018, nobody ever gave Croatia the chance of getting through to the finals in 2018. So there's a bit of luck in all these cup competitions. It's just seven games. And you can you can do those seven games and you are through to the, to the finals. So for Morocco, great one for Africa. At least Africa will have at least 10 slots now in, in the next uh, World Cup in 2026. They have been able to do it and we must give kudos to the coach, the Moroccan yeah. coach. Just three months in the job, he has been able to marshal out this team um, into into the semi-finals of the, of the World Cup. And he's an indigenous coach. He was just a former coach of um, RS, um, no, of Vida Vida Casablanca, Casablanca, the champions of, of the yeah, African Africa. continent. So, True. and he has been able to take his experience and what he has learned under coaching and wider Casablanca, he was, we should also f- not forget, he was in 2017, he also served as an assistant coach for the Moroccan national team. So he has, he has learned it and he has, he's bringing to the, so what we should also note, there's a unity in this Moroccan team. There's a, there's, there's a form of cohesion in this Moroccan team. I uh, saw some reports, the players and their families are all together right yes, in, in, in the same hotel, yeah. in the same hotel, in the same building. So there's 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 this sense of unity. And Sofia Bufao's mom is seeing them, Asha Vakimi's mom. So there's this sense of unity and this the urge and this yeah, well. from, from, from the families to push to push these players on that. Akim Ziyech, even uh, Vlaid uh, Malazinovic was still the coach. Yes. I'm but sure he, he, no, he definitely he would not have. Even Mazawi. Um, so 
But uh, the, the current coach of uh, Morocco, his name skips me, he has been able to bring back these players and these players have been very, very instrumental for them. So it's, it's a great one. First, um, as an African, because I identified them as Africans because they went to this World Cup with uh, on that from the slot of um, Africa. There's no Arab slot. So for me, it's, it's a great one for African continent as well. Yeah, thank you very much um, for that in-depth analysis he makes. Um, yeah, you talk about the Moroccan FA boss and what he's been able to do since 2014 and you cannot help but compare it with our own you know football administrators right here we just had one who told us that uh, yes, we had a bilateral agreement <laughs> with um, Qatar but I don't want to get into that though I just wanted to point that out um, let, let's get into um, the other quarterfinal fixture we saw and uh, Novi I'm going to stick with you now because we talked about it on the previous edition of you know the podcast um, England versus um, the champions yes mm-hmm. the holding champions I'm talking about holding France champions. and yes we saw what happened um, Harry Kane with an opportunity to you know put England on level terms after Olivier Giroud had of course taken France um, got France ahead in that game, sent the ball to the heavens. In fact, rumors have it right now that still the ball is still in space. You know, <laughs> they are yet to get it. But I hope it got to London before they did. Uh, yes, I hope. I know they'll be in London by now. <laughs> but I don't know. What What did you make of that performance? You say a yeah. very, very, yeah. you know, good performance from the French team. I wasn't I wasn't surprised by the outcome at all. Yeah, you talked about yeah, it. Because I called it. I. I Everything I said. But don't praise yourself too much. No, I'm not praising myself. Stay humble. I mean, I'm, I'm actually stating the fact. <laughs> okay. I, I, I said it was going to be entertaining and I knew that from the start. Fans England, of course, it's going to be entertaining. Fans has the edge. And I think bench of England would have you know, changed that game so, so much. If yes. that man actually made the right choices. Mm. Not being sentimental. Support United, almost everyone knows. All, all my friends know. But Marcus Rashford, that boy is sensational. He started, and okay, you can say sensational, but he's actually proving it. He's actually scoring goals in the World Cup stage, in yes. the big stage. He's gotten three already. Three already. And oh, he know, got three already your, because he's your, out. You're starting for the, okay, maybe because he's um, a little more dynamic, maybe he cuts inside and you know, tries to drop deep and presses. But against a defensive fullback like Kunde. Yeah. What is Foden going to do? He's really not going to do much because he's just going to be another midfielder. And then go to the right wing. I, I, from the first half, I always said Saka was too soft for that game. He was too soft. But Mancano was just bullying this kid. Mm. But yeah, he stepped up in the second half and even made forward runs and, you know, one day he won a penalty. penalty. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like the wings of England were, were non-existent. Also, even the wings of, of fans, because uh, Mbappe was... You might say oh, uh, we just got to see one slight battle between him and Kawaka. Yeah. And he just outpaced him. On like that occasion. But it was, it was a bit disappointing and, yeah, considering the whole yeah. hype we had with Mbappe. I think that that's how it's all. going to end up. And I think the coach actually said something about that. Listen, forget about the wings. If we can, if we can get a, a clip of that training video, I'm very sure too many was working on his shooting. Because everyone is, oh, focus on the wings. Yeah, exactly. Focus on Mbappe. Mbappe and it's going to Dembele make a difference. Well. Dembele is going to, you know, cut in. He's going to shoot. And then just told Chouameni, see, just shoot, shoot the ball. Just keep practicing. And Chouameni looked around. He did not see anyone to pass to. And he took it from there. That Fine is, strike. That is fantastic instinct, quick thinking, and just, just impeccable accuracy mm. to get the ball at the back of the net in that stage, in that time. And from that and, distance as and well. From that distance, and that propelled them. Yeah. And yeah, you can see King was like you could bet your life for King. Yeah. You know, in scoring, I feel like there are two players that you can bet your life for in any situation. Maybe three penalties, four penalties, they'll score. Ronaldo, that guy is nervous. Mm. Penalties, he will score it. But like say Penaldo or whatever. Yeah. He's going to well, that's why I scored Penaldo last week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that first penalty, even if the keeper dived there, bro, he wouldn't even get there. That's how good Kane is. And I feel like the pressure just got him in the second penalty mm. because, oh, this is your teammate. Yeah. He knows you Club so well. Mate, exactly. You guys have spent a lot of years together. And can I do it again? True. And you know, the second time, should I go to the same place or should I go to the opposite direction? And he just blazed it over. The pressure was seriously on him. And you could see Mbappe's 
mocky reaction. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just feel like everything worked out according to how it was supposed to go. Now, you, you keep on talking about script because the last time you talked about um, a script that was written for Messi to win the World Cup. We are still asking who that script writer is. Uh, uh, and the way I sound, been, it seems like uh, that was another script. I've been, I've been, I've been hearing lots of the, that, that, that talk about the script. About uh, uh, the script you know what? About script. We'll get to that script, Emek. Let, let's settle down with in, I brought up the script issue because, you know, the way no, um, Novi was sounding, it's like, okay, you don't watch them before we become watch them. But um, Gareth Southgate's future has been up in the air, yes, yeah, since that um, defeat to France. And of course, Roy Keane said, bro, it's over. And then we had Alan Shera who said, come on, this move that Southgate can offer to that team. Have you seen that score? Mm. But, but he's led them to um, a semi England, and a final at the World Cup. England, England should be reaching the finals. That's good. That's good. Uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't buy that. England should be reaching the finals. So yes, you, okay, they, yes, they have played. Uh, they have played. Uh, if they should be reaching the final, they should have defeated France first off. Mm. And they met, I meant, and they met France. They were the defending champions, and France defeated them. That does not mean the squad is not good. We have seen fantastic squads. He built the squad. Don't yeah, we have seen, we have seen well. fantastic squads that could not that could not get to the finals of the World Cup. Even the England Golden even Generation, the England Golden at, one generation point. at one point did not. They did not even get to the semi-finals. Mm. They did not get to the semi-finals level. So, he, you you can't if you say okay yes yeah yeah it's coming home. They have that belief that it's coming home. It's coming, it's coming to England. That's what they see. It's coming to England. But that does not mean. If you check it squad by squad, are England the best squad in this World Cup? Sorry, but do you know why I say that? Mm. Team chemistry. They mm. reach the yeah. when a team bonds like this together, from start of a tournament to finish, mm. they automatically have this chemistry. Argentina's team chemistry now, if it if it has a rating, it should be like 100 because they know that that squad has you know come together from Copa America. So that's and then the quality of players. Well, 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 what you are forgetting is run up to this World Cup, England had a disastrous run. Uh, you could say they're, it was they're lost, the no, Nations no, League, so no, it no, wasn't consequential. No, before, before then, he makes, you can they argue, lost almost you can argue that so, France there was already, about also there was, had a disastrous yeah, no, run there, there was, there the was already, There was already clamour for okay. the change of Gareth Southgate yes, the prior world. to the World Cup. To the world. And he has done his bit. But if you say England should be get into the finals, Considering the quality of opposition they are faced, they faced it. Uh, they are facing France now, yeah. one of the strongest, the current defending champions, and they could not defeat uh, defeat France. The Euro final. Mm. They made yeah, they made it to the Euro final. Kudos to Gareth Southgate. There's, there's no he has done for me. Has done. He's the best England manager they have had in a long time. They can reach the finals. It's it's a game, but should not. That means that means it's like. Of course, your objective is getting. Yeah, it's always objective. Get can you achieve hope. that objective? That's your objective. Because you? of who you have. It's only in. Okay. okay. For, a team, for a country like Morocco. Okay. What would your objective be? Of course. The quarterfinals, at least. Reach round of sixteen. But okay, Brazil's coach. What would they ask him to do? We need it. Home. Mm. have everything. You have nine attackers. Of, you, have, you have the best. Okay, guys, let me get your position yes, clear on this one. Yeah. No view. Yeah. You are of the opinion that Southgate should be shown the way out. Right now, I think they made the right decision. Yes. Yes. Okay. You try how many times? And you don't get it. This is just the second time he's trying. The other time they play to the semis. Have, have you seen it? the number of coaches that have been shown the door? Right? You will get to talk about the casualties, of course. So, okay, Emex and. From the way it's sounding, it's like Southgate should at least be given Heroes 2024. Am I uh, speaking your mind? Heroes 2024 to get the major job. If you, for now, unless they are going to get a better manager than Gareth Southgate. And can you propose one? If they are going to get a Thomas Tuchel, if he's willing to settle down for into 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 club football, I don't buy. But I don't. I don't. I'm not. I'm not a big fan of him. Um, Moishu Pochettino. Okay. But if if you are going to bring in a Thomas Tuchel. To, to 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 take over from Gareth Southgate. There's no issues. But if you are still going to try another test strong project, mm. if you are still going to try to woo Grand Potter maybe after two years, <laughs> or if you are still going to try to bring in um, a, the current uh, manager of Nottingham Forest as as, as, as the bookies have been predicting, or at the out, if you are going to start another project, mm. I don't think it it makes sense to get them there. So the Euros is just two years away. Yeah, it's just less than two years. Less than two years away. Two years away so we are going to have, have another Euros. And if you look at this team. I get we, there's a criticism for Gareth Southgate, 
but I think they should applaud him for the work he has done with this Obviously. Team. Massive work. England have not gotten to the semi-finals of the World Cup since when? Mm-hmm. He yeah. got to the semi-finals and he also got to the Euros finals and they lost to Italy and also in the semi-finals they lost to Croatia. Though yes, he made some tactical decisions that, should, that, that cost his team that game. But at least the man has done what no English manager at the moment can do. So I'm of the opinion if you're letting guys out there go, bringing a top, top manager that you know that on the basis of six to seven competitions, he can do that. And for me, the only manager that rings a bell in my head at the moment is Thomas Tuchel. He's free, he has managed, he has coached in England, and you could see in club competitions, mm-hmm. you saw him in the UEFA Champions League, he was able, he was able to get Chelsea to the UEFA Champions League. Even they before they that, with Paris Saint-Germain, he got them to the finals. Final. Also, if you look at the domestic cup competitions record, mm-hmm. he has been really, really impressive. So for me, if I'm going to get another manager, apart from Gareth Southgate, it needs to be a manager that is on a, on a higher level than Gareth Southgate. So you, you, but you can, one can also argue that, come on, club football is different than national team football. No, and no. Tukel lacks experience when it comes to national team football. As national well. team football is, you're coaching just a... Uh, about three months time or four months time. Yeah. That's how you coach, and it's based on club competitions. That's why you can have shocks in 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 in, 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 in World Cup competitions. Yeah, it's a little. Di- yeah, it's a different. Yeah, we can always adapt. It's it's club football. Club football is day to day. National team football. You get your players just two weeks. But you're able to- guys, don't you think between day to day you work with these guys almost every day? You know, for months, sometimes for years, mm. as compared to a situation where you work with a player once in you know, a couple of months as well. You are licensed to travel to watch this. Watching and working with them is different as well. Yeah, it's it's. That, that's what you have to. That's your job. Yeah, yeah it's different. So I bring it on for the best players in the country, in the country okay. that can play a particular side. That's why when okay. Luis Enrique said, "Excuse me, he was not taking Sergio Ramos, he wasn't taking Thiago Alcantara. Thiago Alcantara. Let him do his job." And you have seen what is what is what yeah. is um, decision as that's what international football is. You take a, you take you select the players from your nationality, and you say these are the players I want. And this is club competition. Club competitions. Club competitions don't mean you need to play fantastically well. Mm-hmm. Club competitions just mean you have the mental strength, and the coach is able to Get create job a done. winning formula. That and Thomas, look at, when Chelsea won UEFA Champions, it took them up in January or December, yeah. and you went on that run. But Chelsea the best team in the in the, in the Champions League. League. No, but they were playing what they call efficient football. And Thomas Tuchel can guarantee you efficiency when it comes to club competition. You know, he also got to the Carabao Cup uh, finals Actually. last season with Chelsea. So he shows his record in cup competition. That's what I'm saying. If you are going to go for a manager at the moment and you say you want to start Gareth Southgate, for me, that should be Thomas Tuchel. If you are not getting Thomas Tuchel, why not um, stick with Gareth Southgate? All right. So one team at the World Cup who is getting um, efficient results at the moment has to be um, the team inspired and led by Leo Messi at the moment. Um, okay, let's get to the script writing conversation finally. Because, of course, we saw them. They were able to progress through against the Dutch national team. Fourth one penalties. An intriguing game it was. Personally, I was annoyed with the Netherlands. I felt they wasted our time. They came from two goals down after, of course, uh, Molina and Leo Messi had gotten Argentina ahead. And Workhouse came in, beautifully worked goals, particularly the second goal. And we went to a short time and well felt, okay, yes, Netherlands were going to put up a good fight, but they just, they just, you know, survived at that point in time. And then got to penalties, Emi Martinez with two good saves, and then got Argentina ahead. And as a result, they have been able to book um, a date with Croatia, who also completed another big, you know, shocking result against the dancing Celestial of Brazil, who, of course, have danced their way back to Rio de Janeiro. But let's let's now delve into the encounter we expect to see um, really soon, the semi-final encounter. Novi, I'll start with you. Um, Argentina versus Croatia. They have met twice before in the World Cup group stage. And the first time they met was in 1998, where Argentina actually prevailed one nil over them. But don't forget, four years ago, both teams were in the same group as Nigeria. Yes, when they met in the group stages. And yeah, Croatia were one on that occasion. Three nil that game ended. So this is actually going to be the first meeting between both teams at the knockout stage. Um, Argentina have never been eliminated from the World Cup in the final four and have progressed to the final every time that they have gotten to the semis. You know, the last time they were in the semis was 
from eight years ago in 2014, where they played in the final and then they lost. Then you talk about Leo Messi. He has created 16 chances in the World Cup, which is the second most of any player, only behind Atwan Griezmann of um, France, who has created 17. And a six goal contribution that is four goals and two assists in the World Cup is second to that of Kylian Mbappe, who has had five goals and, of course, two assists. But it makes, let's talk about this Croatia side. Croatia have managed to reach the extra time in five of their last six World Cup knockout matches only fa- failing to do so when they were defeated 4-2 by France in the finals some four years ago. Yes, um, they haven't won any of their knockout games in normal time for the last 24 years. The last time they did so was in 1998 when they defeated um, Germany 3-0 in the quarters. But, you know, I'm bringing this up because Novio talked about Croatia dragging the game to extra time. Mm-hmm. And it's obvious, like personally, I taught them extra time and penalty specialists. It's obvious that that was the plan against Brazil. And they executed that to perfection, if you like. So h- how do you think Argentina will be able to cope with this Croatian side who have obviously shown incredible level of fitness in this competition? Yeah, I- I'm sure the Croatians also are going to be worried of going into penalties with Argentina. Because Argentina is very formidable side when it comes to penalties, especially with Emiliano Martinez and also um, 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 Leo Messi leading the pack. So, Croatia, I'm definitely sure they are worried about also going into, into penalties. I'm sure they had this pitch of confidence when they said, okay, we're going into penalties with Brazil. Uh, I think they, they had that confidence. Yeah, that, okay, it's a bit new to Brazil. Yeah, yeah they're exactly. like, okay, Djokanovic uh, could save us about two penalties. And, uh, how about Alison Becker's qualities? If you get our penalties right, I don't think Alison Becker will get one. So there was this, I'm, I'm just guessing, there's mm. this, there was a bit of confidence with them saying, let's head into this uh, penalty shootout with Brazil. Yeah. This 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 is our opportunity to win this game. That was and how they, they won it. in 2018. And they did it. And it's a different goalkeeper from the one uh, in Okay, they had, yeah, yeah, they, they had Super so, Super Sit. And yeah. they have uh, uh, Jokanovic now yeah. at the moment. And he has been so good with penalties. So there's this confidence they had going into penalties. Knowing, yes. We can we can we can battle it up with Brazil when it comes to penalties, and the game plan for the coach uh, Dalic, he was a coach also in 2018. Yeah, he's immense. And Gavdiola, um, the, the centre back linked with Chelsea, he has that been, 20 years. That guy, that, 20, in that, 20, 20, that guy plays yeah, like sure 30 years. 20, oh. 20 years. The guy is so so good. The way he marshal out them, Richarlison, it took a moment of brilliance from uh, from Nima for Brazil to be able to get that goal. Without without that brilliance from Nima. The, the Croatians practically shut out, shut out um, the Brazilians from the game. The likes of Vinicius Junior up against uh, the guy from um, the guy from Celtic, uh, the, the right back from Celtic, uh, is it Juranovic yeah, or something? Jo- Juranovic, I think yeah, so. Yeah, so Juranovic, yes. Yeah, yeah, the right back from Celtic. So he did well. He was able to cut out uh, Vinicius from the game. I, I think Tite made a bit of a mistake. Bringing uh, Martinelli into that game. Martinelli is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is an attacker that will drive you to the byline. It will take you on. Yes, Vinicius needs a little bit of space and freedom to go to room. But Martinelli is not is not skillful, but he can move that ball. He can take the ball to the byline and cross the ball into the box setting. But Brazilians and after that goal, they went back to sit. They brought in defenders, but defenders they brought in could not do the job. The likes of um, um, Sandro, who could not do the job there for them. But this match, Argentina Croatia. Um, it's looking like a drab match. Uh, I don't think there's something too spe- special that is going to happen in that game. But you should know this Croatian team have not been fantastic in this tournament. Also. From so I think it's going to be a dicey game. If Messi steps up into steps up again like the way he did against the Netherlands, uh, I think it's going to be game over for Croatia. But you can't you can't whistle away like, the experience of the likes of Luka Modric, likes of Brozovic. Bo- Modric is getting kudos, but the job Brozovic has been doing in the middle of the park, the running around. The hustling of uh, midfielders, uh, he, he has he has been top notch. He has been top notch. Uh, so, uh, for me, it's going to be. I'm looking at the match ending into extra time and also penalty shootout. Might decide that match because the defense of Brazil uh, of Argentina, beg your pardon. When you look at the attackers, uh, Croatia, though they don't have the likes of Mazukic, but yes. they still have Petkovic there. Yeah, Petkovic. Those are guys that are yeah, 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 well. yeah, they are guys okay, that are looking at the bulky yeah, guys. Yeah, I'm looking at the bulky guys and okay. the tall guys that can okay. bully the likes of Otamendi. Mm. That can bully the likes can of. Can Otamendi uh, really be bullied like that? When it comes to when it comes to ball on the air, it's tough on the air. But when it comes, if Modric delivers about ten crosses into that box, Petkovic might get two or three. 
I might get four. Stands a chance of winning four if they go to if they go for an area draw with them um, with Otamendi. And that could be dangerous for, for Argentina. So I'm concerned with their height, but they have been able to manage that height defense very, very well. But we can talk about Lissandro Martinez, Martinez as well. Lissandro Martinez, but they are going to be missing Akuna and Montiel yeah. because they are out due to suspension. Yeah. So I don't know how the likes of um, Tagliafico and the, the other guy will be able to step in that play. But I'm seeing the game ending into extra times, unless as usual there's a messy magic. Mm. So you think um that brilliance will come through no view? Yeah, you know, I said in the last time, I said quality. Sometimes all it takes is the moment of quality. Yeah, moment of brilliance. And, and he showed that quality that against assist. Netherlands for yeah, both goals. That, that, that okay, the first goal in particular. That assist, that assist. That's, that's just all you need. Just leave it to Messi. That assist can only be done by Lionel Messi. There is, there is, yeah, there is no player that you pick now that will see that the angle is an impossible angle to find. How, how did he even know that that guy was still making that move at that point? And the midst of those Dutch defenders. Mm. So it's ridiculous. I mean, it's yeah, it was an angle that I saw, so, you know, over over the okay, player. Yes. Bro, that 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 pass was magical. Yeah, I know. That's why you just need that moment of brilliance. It was a moment of brilliance for Messi and. Well, I also have a problem with Scaloni. I don't think um, Lautaro Martinez has been uh, in his best in this competition. Mm. And I've noticed any time Julian Alvarez is sticking off from Argentina, Argentina struggle. Mm. It happened in the game against Australia. Immediately Julian Alvarez was taking off. Australia got a go back. Mm. It happened against the Netherlands. Immediately Julian Alvarez was taking off. Netherlands got two goals back. I, I, I've noticed... He, you you can't, you know, Dybala, Dybala can't play at the moment because there's a mess at, at the, and they practically play the same the same position. So, uh, and he struggled with fitness issues. Yeah, with fitness well. issues coming into the World Cup. So, as I was saying, I have this issue with Lautaro Martinez coming in and the tempo is dropping. Watch the way Argentina play. Milan Alvarez is able to press. He's a young guard. He presses yeah, from the Guardiola system. He knows he has to press. And when and that works for them against Australia, yeah, Australia once he presses, Congo, yeah. yeah, once he presses, that gives room for Messi to drop deep and just play behind him, and that gives Messi the room to be able to do whatever. He does. That's what Martinez does not offer that that much. That, well. And you look at the ball striking of of Julian Alvarez, it's clinical. And you can you can compare it with the ratio to Lautaro Martinez has lost has lost so many goal scoring chances in this competition at the moment. So anytime Alvarez gets off the pitch, Argentina tends to go Not back and beach. start to sit deep and try to sit deep and try to break on the counter. But I, I don't know. Maybe if Julian Alvarez can at least if yeah. Argentina would prefer to get the game done in 19 minutes and True. go into extra time, at least it gives you over 30 minutes to relax before the World Cup final. Exactly. So, why the best thing to do is get this job done in 90 minutes, in which I believe if Julian Alvarez is on the pitch for at least 90, get the guy play 19, it's just 19 years old, mm. years away. Get him to play those 90 minutes. And I just hope Leon Scaloni gets his substitution wrong, but right, because the substitutions have always cost Argentina. Final score for you, Croatia, Argentina. Argentina 2-0. Two, two Okay, um, just in case you haven't been informed, we've got cards right here. Uh, okay, and yeah. if you get your prediction wrong, get ready to get offered a yellow card next okay, time. Yeah, Possibly think, a red. Let me, let me think about my prediction again. Okay, you think about, think it, about again. it again. I'll okay. get back to you. In favor of Argentina. So your script writer coming through. It has extra time at all. Okay, okay. okay. Amex, have you gotten yours right? Okay, Argentina 2-1. All right, uh, let, let's move to another um, semi-final clash we expect to see, guys. Of course, these guys, Amex have emphasized it over and over and over. Um, they are flying the flag of Africa first before the Arabian flag. There's no Arab. We get it, we get it, but the Arab world is proud of them as well. But um, come on, um, no view. Morocco getting this far and a possible final place for them. But first, they have to get past the defending champions, France. What do you think their chances are? You know, that's, um, that's almost been the theme of this World Cup. The impossible. The impossible chapter. Really? It's going to be unfair to come down to oh they are just better off. Morocco had, they, they, these guys have not considered a goal in the world when I saw that start that's me yes. check. Yeah from an opposition. From an opposition they've not considered and that's just that's that's, that's that's incredible. For fans fans this level of experience the fact that these guys really want it and the fact that they're doing this without so many key players. Yeah over six players are right? doing it so easily they're just walking past teams, walking past, and Morocco stands in their way, and you know they are saying, "Oh, what, what, what happens if it's surprise, a shock happens? They will not let that happen." Mm. Trying to make a joke, possession-wise, they are going to dominate. Attacking-wise, defensively-wise, everything is going to be on point. And I don't feel like it's to 
come down to being unfair tomorrow because of how much they fought for this and how far they've come. But at the, at the end of the day, fans, Kylian Mbappe, Oliver Giroud, and the best form of their lives right now. And they're going to deliver. Mm. Fortunately for Morocco. Oh, if I'm wrong, of course, I'll be, I'll be very glad to be wrong mm. because I would really love that African you know, vibe to just keep going in the World Cup. Which is the finals, massive, yeah. absolutely massive. But I think that France will just finish the job before extra time. Mm. The two nations, Morocco and France, have met on 11 previous occasions and of course, as we can expect, France have dominated those encounters. They have won seven of their last meetings and the last win um, Morocco actually was able to get against France was in far back 1963. However, this is going to be the first time both teams will be facing off um, at the FIFA World Cup. France are trying to do what no one has managed to do since Brazil 60 years ago in 1962 where they defended the men's World Cup title. And also, Saturday win over England meant that France became the first defending champion since Brazil in 1998 to reach the semi-final. But Imex, um, Novio said something about the defense line of France and it's something I've noticed. France are yet to keep a clean sheet in the five games they've had in this competition. Don't you think that's something that um, Morocco can capitalize on? You know, they talk of Hakim Ziyech in the form of his life, they talk about Sabiri, you also talk about yourself and the CV of Sevilla as well. Don't you think that that's an angle that um, Morocco can capitalize on and you know try to pull up a shock against this French team? Morocco themselves are not a high scoring side. Mm. That, that's a very important to note. They are not a high scoring side. They have, they have scored about just four goals or three or four goals in this competition. This, this side. So they have this attacking quality to be able to hurt um, the, fr- the French team. Uh, maybe because I'm sure also note in the last game they had lots of senior players. They were taken off due to injuries. Uh, Roman size was off due to injuries. Akin Ziyech had to be substituted due to injuries. So, will these players get fit enough for for, for the for the semi-finals against the for the semi-finals against them? France. France. So, but as as nobody have said, I think it's going to be a big match for for the Moroccans. I'm going to be supporting them, the Moroccans. Of course, it's an African side, and let's see if they are going to be able to get get the job done. But for the French, I think the French side, the quality is just going to be too much. Mbappe on the wings, Olivier Giroud. And uh, there's also Swani Dembele. And too many as the absence of Ngolo Kante is doing his own bit in the middle of the park. So for me, yeah, I, 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 in as much as I want to see Morocco in the finals of, of the of, of the FIFA World Cup, I don't think I think uh, for the French side is also going to be a big uh, a big task for them that I don't think they'll be able to complete that task. Predictions he makes. Uh, I think a French win and uh, 3 All right. Uh, 3 1. Yeah, 3 Okay, 3 1. Yeah, 3 1. No view. Turn you. Yeah, All right, let's see how it goes. Um, we talked about managerial casualties. Carlos Perez of Iran, of course, left his role after Iran's failure to qualify beyond the group stages. We also had Otto Addo of Ghana, Roberto Martinez of Belgium, Gerard Tata Martino of Mexico. Luis Enrique got sacked, replaced with Luis de Fluente um, right there in Spain. Luis Van Hal, of course, left his role, and we now hear that Runa Koeman, the former Barca man, will actually take charge of Netherlands' campaign um, up to the heroes. And also, we had Tite of Brazil. Could we have more managerial casualties as the World Cup progresses to the final four and then, of course, to the final? Yes, which is said to come up less than six days from today wow it just it just felt like yesterday when they got started but obviously we've enjoyed every bit of it and of course i've enjoyed every bit of my time right here with the guys on the sports pop podcast um this is where we'll be dropping anchor on the podcast today thank you very much novio and of course emex for coming through big thanks and regards to the production crew for making this possible and to you out there for sticking with us don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel and of course follow us on all our social media platforms tune three with you feel free to also follow me on my social media platforms facebook francis atem twitter francis atem at the spot chef and also instagram i am frank yes until i come your way again guys i remain francis atem and do well to stay blessed and stay sporty. Goodbye.